Hey everyone, welcome to another StuCant Expert Session. My name is Trevor Erickson, and today we're pleased to have AJ Wilcox with us from B2 Linked. AJ is an expert in LinkedIn advertising, and he's going to be teaching us how to find success advertising on the popular LinkedIn network. So let's jump right in. AJ, we're glad to have you. Hi everyone, thanks for attending my presentation on business to business advertising essentials. I'm AJ Wilcox, and I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a longtime PPC SEO guy, you know, pay-per-click advertising, search engine optimization guy. Uh, I've been doing that for about eight years. Uh, here, about two and a half years ago, I I started getting really heavy into the business-to-business -business space, uh, and in there, I, I stumbled upon LinkedIn advertising, and it was something that I didn't really consider as being a big deal. I just figured it probably wasn't great if I'd never heard of it. But I ended up seeing some awesome successes there. And so I started considering options, and I ended up quitting my full-time job to, to start a, a company, a consultancy called B2Linked.com. I live with, uh, with my wife and three kids in Lehigh, Utah. I'm a triathlete and an exotic car lover and, of course, a soulless ginger, as you can see from my, my picture there. So let's go ahead and hop right in. The definition of B2B is, like I said before, business to business. Now, what that means is it's selling to a business individual, a business user, rather than an end user and a consumer. And so B2B is inherently less sexy than B2C. There's nothing like, a, like having part in a household brand, a brand that everyone knows. B2B brands aren't that. But in, a, in a, an awesome research paper I, I got to read, I found out 72% of the Fortune 1000 are qualified as B2B. And so that's definitely where the money is at if you're looking at, uh, at the industry in general. So I, I definitely recommend getting into B2B if you're not there already. Uh, one of the biggest challenges in the business-to-business -business advertising world is business users are still consumers. So they're already being bombarded by the B2C, the, the business to consumer communication. And so there's a big challenge in cutting through uh, the, the consumer focused advertising and reach your business user for who they are. So how do you reach these business users? I think the default way that most people consider is through paid search. Everyone knows about Google AdWords, Bing ads, which is a keyword based targeting. Um, it's great because when someone types in a keyword, they are showing some form of intent. So if someone types sales training video or buy a sales training video, they're probably they're showing some intent that right now they're looking for something and they're probably ready for a very bottom of the funnel, ready to purchase kind of mindset. So it is very intent based and that makes a lot of sense. The issue here is that there is no way to qualify someone who uh, by the keyword they type because theoretically your CEO w could type the same keyword as your janitor so there's no way to actually qualify who that person is and maybe what their ability to purchase what their seniority is within the company etc so how do you ensure that your your dollars get spent uh, on a prospect who has who qualifies as BANT and for those of you who are unfamiliar BANT is a is a sales framework where that stands for budget, authority, need, and timing. These are a really good way to qualify your prospects. Uh, if they have all four, they're obviously a very hot prospect to you. Well, I think one of the, the biggest challenges that people have, like I said before, is finding who these, uh, who these business users are. And so you'll turn to ad networks. Now, there are a lot of ad tech vendors who will say, you know, we specialize in, in reaching business users. So you have companies like the Bizos, the Quantcasts, the Demand Bases, and lots more. This is just kind of a, a kind of a, a smattering of them. Um, what ends up happening is you look at a Bizo and you see they have kind of fuzzy targeting. They can target, let's say, CXOs in general, and you don't know if that's a CMO, you don't know if it's a COO, a CEO, um, and it's actually quite expensive to get that inventory. You have companies like Quantcast who do uh, what's called look-alike targeting. And what they'll do is they'll monitor the leads that come in from your website, and they'll compare who those people are, what type of user behavior they've seen. They'll compare that to others in their database who have exhibited similar behavior, and they'll target those people. 
And of course, that's also expensive. You have companies like Demandbase who uh, will target by company IP address. So say, for instance, you want to reach IBM. And so this means that if you engage with Demandbase, anyone uh, at from the organization of IBM, if they're searching online or if they're around the internet, they'll end up seeing your ads. Now, the downside to this is both the CEO and the janitor will, will see your ad. There's no way to qualify who in that organization. It's just you're hitting everyone. Then you have targeted publications, something like if you advertise on CEO.com, you're very likely to reach a CEO. Um, and so those are quite expensive as well. You end up paying high premiums for their audience, but it, it is an option in B2B. Uh, a more recent option that's gotten to be gaining a lot of steam is the idea of paid social. So with Twitter, you end up having weak targeting options, uh, especially for B2B, but the clicks are quite inexpensive. Uh, Facebook, their business targeting is actually quite a, quite a bit better. Um, especially because you can target by job title, but it's still, in comparison, fairly weak. But again, your, your clicks are pretty inexpensive. There's a low barrier to entry to trying it out. Uh, LinkedIn is, of course, my focus here. LinkedIn has very, very precise targeting, and they're also quite inexpensive compared to, to a lot of the other options. And so I feel like LinkedIn is really a no-brainer as a place to, to start in B2B or, uh, advertising and marketing. So some of the reasons for this is that users tend to keep their profiles very updated on LinkedIn. When there's a job change, LinkedIn is the first you know, real entity to find out about that. You end up uh, updating your, your LinkedIn profile in general uh, much faster than you update any other social media uh, or anything else. It's very cool because you can target based on almost anything in someone's profile, and we put a lot of information in our profiles. It is a massive site. There's a lot of traffic to LinkedIn. I think they're like the number 11th most trafficked, don't quote me on this, the, the number 11th most trafficked website on, on the net. So there is pretty near unlimited traffic there. You'd have to have a, a multiple, multiple millions of dollar budget per month in order to see the end of LinkedIn's traffic. Uh, I think one of the most powerful things about LinkedIn is the mindset. When someone is surfing Facebook at 9 o'clock at night, their mind is absolutely not on uh, on their work in the morning. It's probably more on playing Farmville. Um, but at least when you know someone is on LinkedIn, it's probably because they have some uh, career or business objective that they're going after. And so you're catching them in the right mindset uh, for making a purchase. It ends up creating very high conversion rates. And of course, LinkedIn advertising is self-serve, meaning you get full control. If you want to crank it up and, and generate a lot more leads, you can do that right now. If something's not working, you can shut it down, pause the campaign, whatever. You get full control over it. So let me give you a little bit of background about LinkedIn, what the platform's like. I'll call this my LinkedIn Ads 101. So if you're familiar with, uh, with Google AdWords, they've kind of established this account structure for, for pay-per-click advertising. Um, and LinkedIn is a little bit simpler of a version. So when you look at Google AdWords, what you'll do, you have an option if you're an agency to have this MCC. It's like a, a way of couching multiple accounts. But by default, you get an account. You have several campaigns within that. You have ad groups within campaigns, and then you have ads and keywords. And it's a great way to introduce a lot of, a lot of structure um, and organization into your account. LinkedIn is a little bit simpler. It just has your account level. You have campaigns, which uh, control, which are you know really control your your bids, your budget, and your targeting. All of those live at the campaign level, and then inside of each campaign, you have your ads. So it's a very simple structure. Uh, LinkedIn requires a two dollar minimum cost per click, so it, it is. Uh, decently more expensive than than other options, but I've found that when you compare it with Google AdWords, there are a lot of verticals where uh, you'll end up paying quite a bit more than LinkedIn, um, you know, based off of those keywords. Uh, there are also other verticals where LinkedIn looks expensive, so it's it's totally dependent on who your audience is, and it is not uncommon to pay between four dollars and six dollars per click. 
Uh, LinkedIn is similar to to AdWords and Bing, where they will allow you to bid on a on a cost per thousand impressions basis, a CPM, or a cost per click. I always recommend starting with a cost per click, just because it it takes the the risk away from you. You're only paying when someone actually is interested in your ad and they, and they click to visit your landing page, as opposed to cost per thousand impressions. You end up paying even if no one visits your your website. And then a note on campaign nomenclature. So if you're organizing a Google AdWords account, what you would do is base all of your campaign names and, and campaign structure off of the keywords that you're going after. So for instance, if, if we use this example of someone selling sales training videos, if you are building this in, in AdWords, you'll probably have a campaign called videos. And then inside of that, you'll have an ad group called sales training videos. And then you'll have ads and keywords inside of there that are like sales training video, sales training videos. On the other hand, when you're looking at an audience-based advertising platform like LinkedIn or like Facebook, um, you could name your campaigns around the audience. So for instance, I could have something like sales manager titles in the US or, um, or if you have lots of different groups in, that are in sales, you could have uh, sales at the beginning, um, delineated with a with a, a dash or, or something so you can keep all of those sales campaigns together. So you might be interested to know what the what the ads actually look like on LinkedIn. Here's a, a screenshot of what it looks like to have the right rail ads. So these these are what debuted on, on LinkedIn in 2007. Um, the, there are three pack of ads. They uh, they hang out in the right rail. They're not super in your face anymore. They used to be higher up on the page. Now they're further down. Um, but when you create them, you get a 50 by 50 pixel image. So you can see they're very small. There's not a whole lot of room to work with. If you are getting a 0.04% click-through rate, I would call that very good. Uh, so you know this is display advertising. It has you know, tends to have a little bit lower of a click-through rate in the industry, but a 0.04% is good and you know you're hitting the right audience. You also have a 25 character headline, that's the, the bold blue part of the ad, and then a 75 character ad line, which is very similar to a Google AdWords where you'd have a 25 character headline and then 35 character line one, 35 character line two, very similar there. So in July of, of 2013, LinkedIn began this transition from being viewed as a resume and job hunting type of site to now they want to be a content hub for all of business. They want to be the place where you go to find business information. And they kicked this off by launching a new ad unit called a sponsored update. So when you go and you're looking at your own news feed on LinkedIn, probably about three slots down, you'll end up seeing an ad, and you can see over here on this AT&T example, it'll say sponsored. Uh, it, it's a native ad, it fits right into to your normal stream. Uh, a lot of people don't even realize that these are ads, but they're, they're very, very exciting, and I'll tell you why. Um, you can see my 0.4% my click-through rate is good here. Uh, that, of course, varies by your audience, but what that means is, for my previous slide, you can see a 0.04% is good, 0.4% is good on sponsored updates, which means you get 10 times the traffic, or at least potential for traffic, uh, which is fantastic. You also get a lot more real estate. Instead of a 50 by 50 image, you now get a 350 pixel wide image. Um, you definitely want to upload larger because uh, certain tablet sizes especially like a retina display or a high, high density kind of display, will show a larger image, but it, on desktop and mobile, it'll end up showing it about 350 pixels wide. So that's a lot more real estate. Your character limits are, are much larger. You can see in my AT&T example here, their intro there, uh, that looks longer than 155 characters to me, so, so they're not really optimized in what they're doing. But if you keep it under 155 characters there, it doesn't matter which type of, of uh, device your ad is being viewed on, um, it won't truncate. So people will end up seeing the whole message rather than just a dot, dot, dot. You can see the title, which is Prepare for the Holiday Rush. Uh, you want to stay under 60 characters on that one. 
And then the description, which is actually pulled from your meta description, from your SEO unit that you've done, um, you can get 155 characters in that description, very similar to what you would plan on for normal SEO. And then, of course, you can see you do get comments. So there is a little bit of that interaction, um, some branding, some, some social sharing kind of aspect to this ad unit. Now, the most exciting part about LinkedIn is the targeting that you can do. So I mentioned on an earlier slide that you can really target by almost anything in someone's LinkedIn profile. Well, here are a list, and this isn't absolutely comprehensive. This is what I would just consider the most important ways that you can target. But I'll go ahead and walk through it. So you can target by job title. If you want to hit people who are project managers, if you're selling something like a project management solution, you can uh, target just job title project manager. There's also a job function. So if LinkedIn can tell that you are in the marketing department, you can target all people who are marketing, um, who are marketers. You can also do a seniority layer on anything, really. So if you want to hit only people who qualify as managers, then you can do that. You can also layer, let's say, your seniority of manager on top of your job function marketing, and you'll end up getting people who are qualified as marketing managers, which is very cool. You can target just a simple company name. Like, for instance, here, if I want to just hit any employee at Microsoft, I can do that. And you can, you can choose up to 100 companies um, if you want to build a segment of, like, the Fortune 100. You could do that. That's one campaign to reach all of the Fortune 100. You can go by category and industry. So, for instance, I could target anyone who's in consumer goods or anyone who's in high tech or anyone who's in, um, you know, they have lots and lots of different industries listed there. You can target someone by the school they went to. So you could say, anyone who went to Stanford, I want to show my ad to. If you have skills listed on your profile, like if you have mad nunchuck skills or if you have MySQL skills, you list that on your profile and someone can target you by those skills. You can also target by the groups people have joined. So on LinkedIn, you have these LinkedIn groups. Uh, if someone is a member of a group called Project Management RS, or any number of others, you can throw all of those groups into a campaign and target all the members of those groups, which can be very relevant. And of course, you get your, your gender, your age. I'll skip one here and do geography. Those are kind of the, uh, the geo-targeting are all um, pretty standard with, with most advertising. The one I skipped here is company size. So you, you go by company size in terms of employees, not in terms of revenue like a lot of services would try to do. So that there is a limitation there. One thing I would say is that LinkedIn's grasp on company sizes are very accurate in terms of who they have data on, but they don't have data on the vast majority of companies. So I'll caution you here. If you're running a very small test campaign and you know you want to hit companies that, let's say, whose company size is between 51 and 2,000 people, you can do that very accurately. Um, but it's very difficult to scale because they don't have the company size on a lot of these, uh, on the vast majority of the companies actually on LinkedIn. Um, so if you're looking to expand, I would try to work around the company size targeting rather than including it just because it's, uh, it ends up giving you not very not very many people in your audience size and it can be hard to get enough traffic. Uh, also very important to understand that you can add almost everything here as an exclusion. So for instance, I can say I want to target all people at Microsoft but exclude anyone whose job function is marketing. So I can hit everyone at, Mar at Microsoft unless you're a marketer. That's possible. You can also combine all of these. So you can say I, I need everyone with a skill of nunchuck skills uh, as a job function of marketing, you can do that. So very cool that way. Uh, I highly recommend jumping in the LinkedIn ads platform. You go to linkedin.com slash ads and just create a fake campaign and just see what your options are because there are uh, lots of different ways to hit uh, almost everyone and it's, it's very exciting. This is what really sets LinkedIn apart from anyone else who has data on businesses. There is something that I call my four pillars of targeting. So to give you an idea, 
what LinkedIn has to do, they have to take every profile of someone and categorize them some way. So we as users, we can put creative titles in there. Uh, you know, I, I could put the title of growth hacker in mine. I know a, a CEO of a company whose, um, whose title is chief quizzard. Um, it's very, very difficult for LinkedIn then to look at that title and understand, okay, where are you in the organization? Which department are you in? How senior are you? Um, it's just very difficult for, for LinkedIn to understand that. So what you can do is uh, create several different ways, and I have four really main ways on how to target any, any individual user. So uh, these are by title, by job function with the seniority layer, by skills with the seniority layer, and by groups with the seniority layer. And here on the next slide, I'll show you an animation of how I actually build that and how it works in practice. So say, for instance, you have this group of, of all CMOs who are on LinkedIn. And if you want to target them, I think the first, uh, the first thing that really makes sense is to target them by their title. That makes a lot of sense. So a lot of people will, will target chief marketing officers by title. And you end up getting this piece of the Venn diagram. You can see you get a, a very large chunk of the CMOs. You have a little bit of that irrelevant, maybe people who call themselves CMOs who aren't really CMOs um, or, or some inaccurate data there. But you've, you've hit a good bunch there, and that's great. You know that the people you're talking to are CMOs. Well, if you want to expand that campaign, something else you can layer on is another one of the pillars of targeting. You can try job function. So you can say, I want the job function to be marketing, and I want my seniority to be CXO. And what that does is it, it actually finds more people, maybe CMOs who don't have CMO specifically in their title. Um, it allows you to reach more audience, and of course you, you'll end up with a little bit of overlapping in titles, but that's okay. This is, this is a play simply to expand your audience and reach more, more of your target. Then of course you can do that with the third piece of our of the third pillar, which is skills. So you can say something like marketing strategy as a skill, and then layer on uh, the the CXO um, uh, seniority on top of that, and you'll end up getting more people who are who have marketing skills and they're a CXO. It means they're probably a CMO, and you're you're gaining more audience that way. And then the fourth is groups. Someone who's a member of, of, this, of a CMO group, chief marketing officers worldwide, for example, um, they're a member of that group. That probably makes them a CMO, but you can also add a CXO seniority layer on top of that. It further qualifies that person as being a CMO. And you can see we've actually hit the vast majority of this, this audience, whereas if you only did titles, you might only be hitting that much. Okay, so challenges on LinkedIn. Some things that if you're actually running a campaign, you'll want to be aware of. LinkedIn, unlike other networks, does not have a conversion tracking pixel. So for instance, if someone comes to your site, fills out a form, and, uh, and you end up with a lead, there's no way to radio back to your LinkedIn campaign to let it know that it actually generated a, a form fill, um, which is quite unfortunate. So that means you have to do it yourself with your analytics. I'll cover that here in a little bit later of a slide. Uh, I talked a little bit about how LinkedIn has an issue with profile completeness. Uh, classifying open-ended inputs is very hard, and so they're, they're trying to guess where people land. Um, and then LinkedIn has to read into people's weak profiles. So if you all you do is put your job title, uh, or all you have are some skills, but you haven't you haven't updated your your job description or anything, uh, it, it's very difficult for them. So um, anyway, the people that it does have good information on, um, completely targetable and uh, it's just worth being aware of. I've heard a lot of people say that when that it might not be worthwhile to learn a whole new platform like LinkedIn just to get traffic from a single domain. It's one thing to get from Google, the search engine that two-thirds of the world uses, uh, but it's another to, to work that hard for a, another single domain. Um, one thing I would say, though, is this might actually be more of an opportunity because fewer people are willing to do that, which means less competition to you as an advertiser. It also means that that one domain is incredibly powerful. Um, when you have 
the users who are all in the right business mindset, it's incredibly powerful for your conversion rate. Um, also important to understand, uh, if you know Google AdWords very well, there's a metric called quality score, and basically it's a score that, that Google will give you based on your propensity to get clicked on as an ad. They are highly incentivized as a platform to, uh, to have clicks. So Google will have the same inventory um, whether someone's getting clicked and making them money or someone is being viewed but not clicked. So Google wants to maximize that. LinkedIn is very similar. They have something called relevancy score. And it's actually even more what I would call ruthless. Um, on Google, if you're not getting clicked on a whole lot, your ads will still show. They'll just, you'll pay more for the click and, uh, and they'll show less often. On LinkedIn, it's not uncommon to have your campaign that's active, your ads that are active, to just stop receiving impressions just because you're not making LinkedIn lots of money. So definitely worth keeping an eye on there. So as you're looking to make the most of, of your LinkedIn campaigns, I'll touch on a few topics here. I'll touch on optimization, how A-B testing and tracking work according to best practice, and then some thoughts on offer testing and nurture. So uh, we talked a little bit about relevancy score. So your goal on any ad network is to get your cost per conversion to the lowest possible point, leaving you the greatest margin for your company. Now LinkedIn is interesting in this regard because their KPI that they optimize on is different than the one you're optimizing for. So let's say that you're running two different ads. Ad A has a click-through rate of 0.61% and a cost per lead of $48. Ad B has a click-through rate of 0.4%, but it has a cost per lead lower at $41. So I'd ask you which ad is better? Well, according to LinkedIn, LinkedIn would tell you that ad A is actually better, but you would say ad B because who cares that you had fewer people who were interested in clicking on it the traffic is more qualified, you end up having a lower cost per lead, which is more important to you. Well, to them, the most important thing is, is utilizing their ad space uh, more efficiently and getting, uh, getting paid more often for showing that ad space. To touch on A-B testing, I would highly recommend always testing between two and three ads in each campaign. Uh, you can do testing based on images. You can do testing based on uh, any of your field inputs. You, you have in sponsored updates, that intro, the headline, the description. Um, and you can also test based off of landing page. So in most platforms, you have this opportunity to rotate your ads evenly to give all of your, your ads equal amount of impressions so you can see which one is tending to perform better in a perfect test. On LinkedIn, you can do that, but it actually hurts your relevancy score, your quality score, um, because LinkedIn sees that they could be showing this ad, let's say that they could be showing ad A that has a higher click-through rate, but instead you're forcing them to show ad B, so you'll end up paying a little bit more. So worthwhile, uh, as a sophisticated advertiser, you can do, um, you can do that A-B test perfectly, but otherwise always be testing two and three and then weed out ads that are non-performers. From the conversion tracking perspective, I highly recommend tagging each individual ad. Uh, the destination URL you can build with Google's URL builder, that is if you're using Google Analytics. If you're using something like, like Adobe or Omniture Analytics, um, you, you can do something called saint classifications, but my guess is most of you are going to be dealing with a Google Analytics. So uh, you'll have access to the slide deck. You can click on this link, or you can just Google URL builder. It'll be the first result. And basically, you just give Google, you give that, that, uh, that web page your inputs. You let it know that traffic's coming from LinkedIn, which campaign it is, and then you give it a little, a little, um, a little peek into what makes that ad unique, they'll spit out a URL that you can put in your LinkedIn ad as the destination URL, and then as that traffic comes to your website, Google Analytics will be able to, um, to classify that and say, this is all the traffic that came from LinkedIn. And then if you have goal tracking set up, you can see 
which campaigns are driving the conversions. And then from a data perspective, there's lots of cool stuff you can do to marry that data up and understand which ads perform and which ones don't. Oh, one thing I should mention here, in an enterprise environment, you can go a little bit deeper in Google Analytics with something called custom data import. It used to be called dimension widening, but it was just a very, very cool way of, of um, telling Google Analytics all the information about the ads you're running and, and then uh, allowing them to show that to you in a reporting fashion inside the platform. Okay, a little bit on offer testing. So when you are advertising on LinkedIn, LinkedIn skews towards content. And, and the reason why is because if you are using an ad unit as a hard sell, fewer people are going to be interested in clicking on an ad. Whereas if you have content that's you know, an interesting article or a white paper that has an interesting topic that someone wants to read about, they would be willing to give you uh, their email address in order to access. Um, LinkedIn will, will favor the higher click-through rate over the value to the advertiser, which would be a lead to you. So it's definitely worth putting a lot of thought into the offer that you, that you, are, you are offering. So a lot of the offers that get used on LinkedIn are webinars, white papers, and other types of gated content, meaning that someone has to give you some their personal information in order to get access to. So if you can build your nurture funnel on LinkedIn to bring people in with those high funnel types of activities, webinars, white papers, gated content, that's interesting to people, it's very, very low barrier to, to entry there. Um, make use of those lighter offers and then you can give them a hard sell later either through your nurture campaigns through like a, like an email drip campaign um, or through um, or even through retargeting ads display ads that kind of follow people around um, I, I won't go into that but it's it's totally possible if you're paying between four and six bucks for a click on LinkedIn it's definitely a higher value click I would absolutely suggest making the most of that by continuing to nurture those leads or that traffic. So that's really the presentation. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of a taste of the B2B landscape and LinkedIn's advertising specifically. Uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter, hit me up on email for any questions or clarifications. Um, I, I'd like to thank you all for watching this and a big thanks to Stukin for allowing me to share with you. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and turn it back over to Trevor here um, and, and I'll be taking some questions. So. Trevor, do you want to kind of jump in here and um, and ask those questions? Oh, actually, sorry, he's already radioing them to me. Um, so let's see, here's, here's a question I'm going to jump to quickly. Um, when would you recommend switching over to CPM bidding or cost per thousand impressions bidding or maybe never? Um, so whoever asked that, that was a really, really good question. Um, so Cost per thousand impressions bidding makes a lot of sense when you have a very high click-through rate. So, for instance, um, if you run an ad and you end up having like a 0.1% uh, click-through rate, which is, is high, but it's totally achievable, if you are paying $4 per click, let's say, for, for that traffic, what you might find is you have such a high click-through rate, so many people willing to click on it, that if you pay by the thousand impressions, you may actually end up getting that that traffic for cheaper. Um, so uh, I use a calculator inside of Excel that um, that compares based on the different inputs which would be cheaper, a cost per thousand impressions or a cost per click. Um, so, but that's something I wouldn't even consider unless you've launched a CPC campaign and have ended up getting a really really high click through rate. Um, so hopefully that that answers it for you. Question two, is there a certain number of target audience that I should be aiming for after I've segmented my campaigns? What's too low? Uh, again, very good question. So on LinkedIn, you're not actually allowed to target any audience size or any group that's fewer than 1,000 people. So for instance, I, I think that what they're guarding against is people being really creepy. Um, I know the limit on Facebook, you can't have an audience size of less than 30, and you can get super, super creepy on Facebook. Uh, on LinkedIn, uh, they don't want you to be able to say, I want to target all CEOs at companies, Apple, and then you're showing just Tim Cook your ads. Uh, that gets a little bit creepy. So, um, so that's very low. 
what I've found is if you're actually targeting a group smaller than maybe uh, 20,000, 30,000, you end up with you know, not getting traffic very quickly. So it might not be worth your time building that campaign. If you're targeting an audience of, let's say, um, you know, 100,000, 200,000 people, you'll probably have no, no trouble getting impressions and getting clicks and, and feeding your sales team with, uh, with traffic. So um, anyway, hopefully that's, that's kind of a guide there. You can't go less than 1,000. I would stay on the higher end of the, of the 20 to 30,000. Um, if you have groups in the 100,000, 200,000, you're probably going to do great. Okay, question three. Which areas should I focus on if I'm trying to outperform competitors targeting the same people? Um, what I would recommend is actually analyze who your who your audience is. You can, um, if you're in your audience, or you can find someone who who is in your audience. Uh, let's say they have the same the same job title that you're targeting. Scroll through their LinkedIn profile and try to understand who the advertisers are and what what and how they're pitching, and even click on their ads. Of course, it, it charges a lot of money to uh, to your competitors, um, so I would I would recommend doing that um, all too often, but uh, but it is an option to you, and see what offers they're using. If they're all using a, a direct hard sell, chances are they're paying a lot for their clicks because they probably have a lower click through rate. Um, so what I would do, I would focus on uh, on a really high performing offer. Um, so really perfecting your content. Another thing is I talked about that the four uh, the four pillars of of targeting, and I'll I'll go back to this slide here. Um, there's a really good chance that your competitors are not using all four of these. Um, all four of these pillars. So, for instance, if you are, you know, if your competitors are only targeting by title, then um, you have a lot of opportunity to hit uh, with groups, job function, and skills uh, people who they're not already targeting, and so you can you can take a lot of their their traffic away, which is awesome. Um, just be more efficient at reaching the audience. Um, Okay, so that, that looks like the end of the questions here. I'd like to go ahead and, and turn it back over to Trevor actually this time. Um, but if you have any questions, I'll, I'll pop back to my back to my, my final slide. Feel free to hit me up uh, with questions on Twitter uh, or reach out to my, my work email, um, and I'd be happy to help you out there. All right, thanks, AJ. Thanks for answering those questions, some good questions that came in. Um, I'm going to try something new at the end of, of this expert session. Uh, we're going to ask AJ um, what maybe one of his favorite marketing books um, is right now or uh, even an online uh, tool or resource that's kind of the, the go-to uh, tool that he uses with uh, marketing online in general. Yeah, yeah, good question. Uh, okay, so I'm not a big reader. Uh, all the reading I do is is pretty much either on blogs or it's an audiobook, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, I, anyway, uh, I think the best resource that I can share there is a company out of San Francisco called Ad Stage, like a like a performing stage for advertisers, um, and it's a it's a platform where people can. Um, you can load in all the different accounts that you advertise on and manage all of them through one platform. Um, they're a newer company, and so they have a lot of motivation to write great content and get uh, and get their notoriety up. And so their blogging team just does an incredible job of writing about LinkedIn, so you can get a lot of this great information. I've even guest posted for them a couple times. Um, they write on Google AdWords, on Bing ads, on Facebook and Twitter ads. Uh, so it's it's a great resource to follow. Adstage.io um, is the website, and so if you're into online marketing, especially PPC advertising, that's a great resource. That's pretty cool. So that so that will allow you, someone to import, let's say, a LinkedIn campaign, um, Facebook campaign, um, and even AdWords campaigns all in one one space. 
Yeah, the idea is if you have something that works really well on Facebook, you could try porting it over to LinkedIn, you know, almost exactly the same ad. This is kind of the platform that would allow you to do that, testing uh, all of your different messaging and offers across all of your networks. Um, so they're not paying me. This is this is not a paid plug, but it's uh, it's a platform that I do use and, and quite enjoy. Cool. Yeah, well, we'll link that up in your show notes. That's that's kind of a cool resource. I'll have to check it out. Um, I think uh, we're about ready to wrap this up. AJ, we have your Twitter URL, uh, your your Twitter handle here at Wilcox. AJ is uh, that and, and your email are those the two best ways to get a hold of you and to follow you online. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, AJ. And uh, stay tuned for another Stu Kid Expert session.